Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Time with Arkin. I am Arkin, and today I'm going to give you five tips on how to build the best computer you can build from the ground up. So get ready. At Info TV, I actually fix a lot of computers, a lot of small media players, and upgrade them. But it's been a while since I actually built a computer from the ground up, uh, especially for my own personal use. I think the last time I did it was back in high school, 2004 or 5. It's been a while. So this isn't a flashy video of how to put it all together or teach you how to overclock. It's more about the nuances and subtleties that you have to know when you're building it. You wouldn't know if someone didn't tell you or you did your own research to find out. So I did all that work and I want to pass it off to you guys. Tip number one. You should be using a third party thermal compound. Why should you use a third party thermal compound? Because generally it's just better for your cooling. Depending on the heatsink you have, whether it's going to be a traditional heatsink or an AIO liquid heatsink, they both come with thermal compounds on them, but generally they're not that great. Especially on the lower range of heatsinks where it's $30, $40, you will get better cooling with a third party thermal compound. Personally, I got the Arctic Silver 5 and I even use it on my Kraken X62, and when I did, I noticed two, three degrees better in cooling. Especially on your lower end ones, that your $34 ones, you will get anywhere between one to five degrees better. So it is worth it because if you're overclocking um, and increasing the V4 voltage, you will need the extra cooling to keep it down because the CPU will get hot. So use your third party thermal compound. Tip number two, make sure your case comes with the standoff already attached or if you have to do it yourself. Now, I know that's kind of a beginner's um, tip, but for anyone that hasn't built a computer themselves, or like me, where the cases I've got always had standoffs already in place, make sure if it's already there or if you have to do it yourself. To make sure the solid parts of the motherboard aren't coming in contact with the case, so you're not shorting anything, and also to make sure that there's a ground for the motherboard in the case. So it's very important that they're there and you shouldn't put on the motherboard if it isn't there. So just make sure that they're there or you have attach them yourself and make sure they're in the right place. Tip number three. This is an obvious one, but a lot of people don't do it. Update your motherboard files. There's a reason why they make those updates to their BIOS. Whether you're overclocking and you can achieve more of an overclock, or for example, for the Ryzen launch, um, they had issues with overclocking the specs to your RAM. Now, just be careful when you do your BIOS because if you lose power in your BIOS or you do it incorrectly, um, or let's say you use some of the options where you can do it over the internet um, and it drops or something happens to your internet, you will break your system. So be very careful, but the benefits could be that you're getting a nice performance boost. If you don't update your BIOS, you could be leaving performance on the table that you could be achieving really easy with a three minute BIOS update. My personal favorite method is to get the BIOS on a thumb drive or a thumbstick and then just plug it in and go to your BIOS update. The Asus Crosshair 6 update is super easy. Um, it was great. There's even actually um, even a port specifically made for BIOS. It says BIOS right on it. It was great. And because of that BIOS update, I got my RAM to go to the 3200 spec, which is great. Tip number four has to do with fan placement and airflow. And this is specific to if you're using an AIO liquid cooler. I did a lot of research on this and there's a lot of thought, but statistics show there is a consensus of the best placement for this. Specifically, let's say for fan placement. Are you going to use a push method? Are you going to use a pull method? Uh, on your radiator or possibly a push-pull method. And statistics show that generally a pull-push method will give you the best results, whereas a push and pull um, are kind of identical, depending on the placement and, and your case itself. Uh, but with the pull-push method, if you're putting a fan above the radiator and one below, and then one's pushing and the other one's pulling, um, it will increase the thickness uh, of your radiator and your fans. So you have one fan, radiator, and another fan, and that can be a lot. That can be a significant amount of space that you gotta account for in your build. Especially if you have a small case, it's gonna be hard to do that. So if you don't have a ginormous case with lots of space, uh, I would say just choose either pull or push. It doesn't really matter. Um, just account for all that space with your motherboard and your RAM especially. Here's tip number five, and for a lot of you, it's gonna be the most useful. Stop it. Get some help. If you don't have anyone to talk to or get advice from on how to build a computer, or uh, you, your manual doesn't give you all the information you need, you want to ask for advice. I'm going to put the links below to a lot of the resources that I use to help me build this computer. The three types of links I'm going to show you below are organization, advice, and sales. For organization, I highly recommend um, using the website PC Part Picker. Uh, it helps you choose all your parts. It'll tell you if your parts are compatible with each other, and it'll actually show you the best sales. And not only that, it'll show you if that sale is the best price that's ever been at, so the all-time low or not. It's a great site. I use it all the time, and it helps you organize your thoughts on how to make your computer. 
For beginners, if that's a little too much, uh, you don't know exactly where to even start, I recommend Logical Increments. Um, they have a great site where they'll put, depending on the price point, what computer that they recommend you should get. And the best part is that they actually do it to different countries too. So depending on where you are, the prices can be very different and that will determine what parts you get. So what they did is they put it into countries. So you'll get your price point and your country and in their opinion what parts you should get. Number two is advice. If you have no one to talk to or you've never built a computer yourself and none of your friends have and this is all your first time, there's a lot of small things that you'll, you won't know or you'll miss and you need to ask someone about it. My recommendation is going to Reddit and I'll give you the specific subreddits for it. I personally love, 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 you guys are great, um, Build a PC and Build a PC Canada. Um, I've asked a lot of questions on there, people will come and answer all of them for you, they'll even help you out with your build, help you give your opinions on what parts you should get, maybe make uh, other suggestions for it, they'll even help you rate your computer and get you better sales, they are great. Um, I want to personally put a thank you out there to all of them because they did help me with some of my questions on here and some advice regarding my wiring and what um, placement I should put it in. So if you need advice, go to Build a PC for uh, usually for Americans and the world or, or specifically you can go to Build a PC Canada, um, they are great. Can't recommend them more. The last section is sales. So unless you're Mr. Burns and you have unlimited money, um, sales are important and it can save you a lot of money depending on what time you buy your parts. So the last section would be sales and for my recommendation, same thing, Build a PC Sales and Build a PC Sales Canada at Reddit. They are a great way to save money because every day they'll put in different sales, they'll, they'll go in there in the comments and talk about it, if it's a good sale, if it's bad. They'll even make other recommendations for you if that sale is not good enough or there's a better part for a better sale. So it's great. A lot of dialogue and discussion, they'll help you with that. With those two subreddits plus your PC part picker will show you all the all time lows. You can get the best price you can for those parts. Those are great places to go. So thank you for those subreddits too. Those are my five tips. Uh, I know a lot of you already know them, but for beginners, um, those tips will get lost in the flashiness of building your own first computer. So I hope that helps you out. If you're an expert and you have a lot of tips and suggestions yourself, I'd love to hear it. Put them down below, comment. If you think there are some other things I missed, please put those down there below. I'd also love to hear if any of these tips helped you build your first PC. If you like our video and want to see more, then subscribe. We update our content weekly. This is Arkan with Info TV. Arkan signing off. So go forth and build. And while you're down there, if you like our videos, please like us. And if you... <laughs> please like us. <laughs> no. And while you're down there, if you like our videos, please like them. And if you enjoy them, we can always... And if you enjoy them, we always make more. Subscribe to us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more time. <laughs> that guy gets it. Why should you use a third-party thermal compound? Say that three times. Third-party thermal compound. Third. Third-party thermal compound. Hold on. William Shannon. Third party thermal compound. <laughs> okay, no, you don't like it?